Good afternoon again from Yami B TV. Sending loads of love to you all as usual again from Yami B TV. Now, I couldn't last longer than an hour out in the sun today. I loved it yesterday, but today I, it was just taking its toll on me. So I stopped off here. And this memory in this story that I'm bringing up now um, was triggered by an up and coming interview that I have planned for in London at the weekend that many of you won't want to miss, right? So this is also a very sentimental story and again highlights how friendships are formed in the young up-and-coming criminal days um, and how reputations can be built and a lot of the time during my life especially as I got older I realized a lot of big reputational so-called big name criminals um, have their names attached to crimes that they hadn't done and you know people they had that because of their names being attached to such crimes it held a fear factor to say like when I was younger and many of us went through the early bits detention center boss the YP theft burglary robbery guns violence higher um category prisons beating more you know heavier more light you know the, 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 you know what I mean and there's a, a things where you go up and all that these youngsters today are jumping straight in at the deep end and before they know it they're already doing 25 30 years but by the time they reach 21 now there's a message in this is in this story some of you youngsters you want to try and emulate or try and follow in the footsteps of some of these so-called ex ex-gangsters that Uncle Yami says altogether most of the time ends in tragedy and sadness for all concerned with no winners or losers I'm afraid now the four names I'm talking about today are Desi Noonan, Damian Noonan, Paul Massey and a geezer called Paul Flannery now I'm believing that in the younger days when they're up and coming um, criminals involved in alleged robberies and that kind of stuff and drug dealing and whatever whatever that all, all the stuff that you go through as a criminal when you're you're starting out in life right um meant to have fallen foul with a geezer who was running cheat and milk at that time i think his name was white tony right but um, the same way that their name was called with this white Tony is that there were other names called as well with him. Now, I was in a prison up north. One of those four was on remand with me. The case went something like um, white Tony had turned up down a pub called Penny Black or Black Penny and was demanding his money back and saying, look, you don't owe me a hundred grand and that kind of stuff that somebody um, took it upon themselves to put the gun in his mouth and blow his head off, right? Sadly, the end of his life through that life, if you get what I mean. So many names were called around that crime, I believe. So that that's the way that I heard it. And when I was up north, one of those was on remand for it. And I'll always remember them sitting down with the next man with me in, in the presence of me, explaining about the case and what a load of rubbish and this bit can't be me. How can it be me? It's a different colour. This one, he was six foot five, I'm five foot eight, or I'm six foot, you know what I mean? I mean there were so many discrepancies in the paperwork that obviously, ultimately, uh, they got off the case anyway. So they won it and it was it was proved that it wasn't them. Uh, but I believe from those young days, that reputation that they all got built up on might have been from things like that in the young days, right? You lot know more than me down in Manchester. Um, but the sadness of it all, and you know when you think of it this is there's so many familiar stories especially on my channel with some of the men that i've spoken about that you look at it realistically desi damien paul massey all end up dead before their time right and i'm hearing paul flannery um ended up in a wheelchair that he was meant to be a proper nice skeezer as well uh, um paul flannery i hear about him but i never met him right that apparently he jumped out of a window when it, there was a knock on the door and he was surrounded, but he thought it might be Moss side, right? Don't quote me on this. But he jumped out the window and was paralysed and the police jumped on his back. That's what I heard. Um, but all together, showing us again, that look how it all ended from being those little young guys. And we, all of us that lived that life would have had to grown up in a similar way when we remember when we was young, so fearless, not caring about the outcomes. You remember I used to get stones thrown at my window by my mates to wake me up and say, yeah, you're coming, we've got to go down here to go and steal and break into a house or go and do a robbery down. You know what I mean? It used to be, yeah, I'm coming downstairs now. You know, it's like it's an occupational hazard, the way that the game is. But ultimately, I found 
with me that when I used to hear about the big names that have blown off this and shot that and, you know, that are proper gangsters and that I realised in the early days of my career, I couldn't really argue because they were, it seemed, on in that fake life of having, you know, going through the uh, the honours of where you got to reach before you get that great respect where you kind of feel like you're untouchable, where you can call the shots. I was thinking, well, I ain't done what you've done yet. That means I have to do it too. This is a kind of wayward thinking that I used to have, and many men as well want to follow in the footsteps and copycat because a lot of guys that I met in the Cat A's in later life started out just like me, that they wasn't killers they they hadn't killed anyone yet they wasn't gunslingers in the early bits they were just um the everyday so so-called criminals just out there for a pal no and um living a life but when i'm looking back and i'm thinking how, the, how it all starts it definitely definitely plays a part in things for big reputations is that those things allegedly done or not done carry you through for the rest of your life and what I found in later life is some of the things that happened in prison that wasn't me and I didn't mind my name being attached to in the early days. But in later life, I don't want my name attached to it because I know that it wasn't me. And I don't want people thinking it was me. But when you're, when you're stupid and you're taken in by that life and that game, you want you think it's kind of hard and cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not saying nothing, but it was absolute bloody nonsense, man. But those, those, those are the facts and there's look at the end story for all concerned there and they talks about today down in manchester um but ultimately they pay the ultimate price for all that goes with that life with no happy ending for their families or nobody and you know i mean it would seem that it would have all been for absolutely nothing because i'm always of the thing now in my mind that the more dirt you do the more I'm afraid. And we were talking about this the other day with big name criminals. You know, we spoke about Palmer and, you know, other other men that have, have been assassinated and taken out of the game. I always said it to myself and I always noticed that the more things that you got and you've done to people, the more you can't, you're not going to be able to work out where it's going to come from. And in the end, no one is invincible, I'm afraid. In the beginning of time, it looked to me like some of these guys couldn't get touched if you get what I mean, when ultimately, in the end, as we've seen with many of these figures, that you go for the source who's got the biggest power at the end of the day to take those out. If you take the, the one with the most power, the king of the ship, out of the equation, there's normally no one left to give the orders or have the power or to even care to go and get rid of you, you know, because it comes from... Um, the power person who delivers, yeah, I get rid of him, I want him out, you go and do that, and you go and do that. Unless there's real love for you, there won't be no revenge, I'm afraid. And in the end, the revenge you're doing with the way that the streets are and everything, they're going to know where their revenge is coming from. Everything is just an eye-opener. But to me, it all boils down to it ends the same way, man, with no winners and losers and death, um, most certainly for most of us.